Frasier. Hey everyone, Dave here, and right now I'm geeking out over my favorite episode of Frasier. My shirt's a little behind the times. Dave's obsession. Dave's obsession of the moment. It is damn near impossible to name a more successful sitcom spin-off than Frasier. This character was originally designed to be a limited-run, unlikable antagonist on Cheers. Nobody expected him to spearhead his own show that would tie with Cheers and MASH for longest-running sitcom. And over the show's 11 seasons, Frasier would dabble in many genres, but the one it kept coming back to was farce. The show really embraced the inherent theatricality of the multi-camera live audience format by treating many episodes like miniature plays. It wasn't the only show to do this, but after its predecessor, it was probably the most prominent show to do it on a regular basis. Well, most prominent American show. There were countless magnificent farce episodes over the course of the series, many of them written by the great Joe Keenan. And today I want to talk about my favorite one, the season 4 premiere, The Two Mrs. Cranes. Now admittedly, this episode starts off a little slow. No. If you and Maris ever reconcile, I'm going to miss these tranquil mornings. I, reading my newspaper, you tweezing your muffin. Basically, the first seven minutes of the 21-minute episode are all set up, although even the setup contains some pretty great lines. To Keith, the narcoleptic I spoke to earlier, I'd be glad to resume our conversation when you feel a bit more alert, but in the meantime, I suggest that you reconsider applying for that uh, air traffic control position. And yeah, some of the other farces over the course of the series may have been more elaborate or energetic or ambitious than this one, but one of the reasons I appreciate this one so much is it's a pretty clear textbook on the mechanics of farce. Ken Levine, another great Frasier writer, once wrote about the essential elements of farce. Jeopardy. Something the characters need very badly and are willing to go to the greatest lengths to achieve. Lies. A character lies and then to keep from getting caught must lie again. The lies multiply, the character digs himself into a deeper hole, and generally there are several other characters forced to lie. And roadblocks. Complications on top of more complications. In this case, the Jeopardy is Daphne's shiftless ex-fiancee Clive coming into town. She wanted to let him down gently when they broke up, so she gave him the old if we're still single in five years. She wants to let him down gently again, so here comes the initial lie. Clive, I'd like you to meet Dr. Niles Crane, my husband. <laughs> and since Niles spent the previous three seasons making his feelings for Daphne very clear to absolutely everybody except for Daphne, this lie is a lot less innocuous for us than it is for her. And Niles' reaction to all this presents the first roadblock in Daphne's quest to get rid of Clive quickly. Oh, I should be going. No! I mean, we're so enjoying having you here. The roadblocks continue in the form of more characters showing up, and the initial lie leads to further lies in order to accommodate them. Frasier lives here. Ah, he mean temporarily. You see, he's... He's, he's had a spat with his wife. Mm. Maris. And things get more and more frantic as everyone has to keep each other up to speed on the deception. I think for this evening it might be best if you just excused yourself. You see, it requires quick thinking and improvisational skills and a knack for remembering details. Well, I've never used any of those skills as an undercover cop. Oh, please. And between the first act setup and our established knowledge of these characters, we immediately understand everybody's motivation. Every character's reason for participating in the charade is clear and believable. Daphne wants to let Clive down gently. Niles wants to pretend to be married to Daphne. Frasier wants Daphne to get him out of a favor to Martin, and Martin just wants to troll his condescending sons. What'd you do? I was an astronaut. <laughs> this makes Martin the closest thing the episode has to an active antagonist, and it also makes him the character with some of the funniest material. <laughs> Who is it? Open up, Frasier, it's me. What do you know? It's Maris. <laughs> And, of course, Roz just wants what Roz always wants when there's an attractive man nearby. We can celebrate you two being reconciled. That is still tentative. It could go either way. I won't give away the full episode because I think you should watch it. It's a funny episode of television in its own right, and it lays the craft out on the table, the setups, the payoffs, the motivations and the behaviors, and lets them all speak for themselves. It's an inspiration to me as a writer, as it gives me a clear view of the craft that went into it, but never in a way that ruins the magic. 
So to all the writers out there, what are some of your favorite works, be they movies, TV, literature, theater, works that inspire you to create similar works by just showing you how it's done? Let's discuss this in the comments, and until next time, this is Dave, signing off.